Hello, this is Christy from Graphicious. Thanks for joining me in today's Camtasia tutorial. I'm going to show you a way to create a multi-video grid. You know, those video grids that have become very popular in lockdowns and, uh, you know, during the pandemic, they've gone from creating um, concerts or bands, you know, playing music or choir singing in in sync over Zoom or over, you know, over the internet, really, everybody recording themselves individually and then putting it all together into a grid of like a wall of sound, wall of songs, wall of people singing. It is possible to do this in Camtasia. So I'm going to show you a few tricks to make uh, your job easier and also to make the editing more performant and easier to work with. So I'm going to use Camtasia 2021. I think this works also in 2020 and some previous versions, but it's actually better in 2021 because it has some features that help you edit faster. And if you have a lot of videos, I don't know how many videos you have. Someone said, you know, I maybe have 30 or 40 video streams. I don't actually advise you to try that in Camtasia because you could have maybe some performance issues. But if you do want to do it, if you want to try it, I'm going to show you a way to do it. I'm only going to use 12 videos and they're not actually of the same, um, you know, song or same band. It's just a bunch of videos I found. So let's have a look how to do this and how to end up with a nice montage at the end with all the videos playing simultaneously, you know, arranged on the screen all together. So if you look here, I have a folder with some videos that I saved from Pexels and they really are not related in any way. They have different lengths and different orientations. So I specifically chose some videos that are portraits, some that are landscape, so that I just want to show you how to do this so they all work together. We're going to just start by importing these into Camtasia. Select all of them and just drag them to the media bin. I'm not going to put them in the timeline first. I'm going to put them in the media bin because before I actually start editing, I want to prepare some things. So let's go back to Camtasia now and you see them all in here. You can change the thumbnail here to see smaller thumbnails if you want, or you can arrange them by different criteria. It doesn't really matter. They're all video clips and they are all different lengths. So just so you know, this is going to be just as a proof of concept, I'm not actually going to assemble a concert here. So what we want to do first is we want to decide how many videos have to go into my montage. So the first thing is we have 12 clips. That means I can arrange them provided I want to include all of them. I want to arrange them maybe in a four by three grid or I don't know, two by six would be too wide, I suppose, because, you know, you have a 16 by nine screen. So I think four by three works just fine. How do you arrange these? Because they are different orientations, different aspect ratios, maybe. I don't know how your videos come in. So you're going to have to prepare them and in such a way that they go nicely together in their own slot. To do that, we will build a grid. So let me show you how to do a grid. If you go to the canvas, make sure, first of all, that you have your project settings in order. So my project is going to be 1080p, 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second. So that's the uh, size of my project. I'm going to work with. Click apply and leave that alone for now. And to work better, I'm, I've decided to do a four by three grid, which means I'm going to have four videos on a row and I'm going to have three on a column. So 12 clips total. Let me create the grid. So that's the, that's the first step we want to do. We want to create a grid to help us arrange the videos. So I've decided I'm going to do a four by three. I'm just going to go to annotations and I'm going to use one of these annotations from the main arrows and lines tab. It's going to be just a simple line and I'm just going to drag that to my to my canvas. So let's build a grid. So I'm going to just drag the edges of this. Notice you have the snapping turn on. You see that line here that's helping us kind of arrange things. So that means I'm uh, my line is in the uh, middle of the canvas. Notice if I go up and down, it's not horizontal. So when it snaps, it shows you that yellow line. If you don't have the snapping um, enabled, you can go to the view menu and you can turn on enable canvas snapping. So there you go. This is my one grid line. I've divided my screen into two. 
Actually, what I want to do is divide it into three, right? So I'm just going to copy this. Uh, before I copy it, all, I, I'm going to make it white. So I'm just going to go to the colors here, just put that to white. And I'm going to put the thickness up to about 20 pixels. So I have a big, thick white line to work with. I'm going to show you what to do with this later because that's going to be actually quite helpful in more than one way. So I have created this line. I'm just going to put it up in the sort of... Uh, one third copy and paste I'm gonna make a copy of this and pull it down a bit here so I have about I'm just eyeballing this now if you want to calculate automatically um, and make sure that you have exact exact sizes you can go in here into the properties and you can see the position X and Y so you can actually play with this and kind of you know arrange it perfectly in place I'm not gonna do this I'm just gonna eyeball it so here we go these are my two lines. Now I'm going to make a copy of this. Control C, Control V. This is my third line. I'm actually going to make this vertical. So I'm going to use the snapping line on the middle of my canvas here to make that perfectly vertical. So here we go. The top, the bottom, the top bit. Okay. And again, I said I want to do four horizontally. So this is going to be okay in the middle. Control C, Control V to duplicate and put it in the middle kind of here and another copy control c control v and here so this is roughly my grid of where the videos are going to come in now what are we going to do with this this grid this grid is going to help us align the videos and we know exactly which one goes where but at the moment i don't want to actually touch this grid because i am happy with it right now it's going to serve as a guide so what i want to do is uh, i want to select everything just select everything make them long so that it, you know depending on the length of your video you may want to turn this into i don't know five minutes long or whatever but i'm going to just keep it two minutes i'm not actually going to make a long video i'm just going to show you a proof of concept so select all of them and control g to group them together so the this is my grid right now is in a side of a group so what I want to do is, because I don't want to, by accident, I don't want to move this grid around and mess up my grid. What I can do is I can lock this grid. I can lock the track where the grid is. But before I do that, because I want to use it as a guide, I want to move it at the top. So I'm just going to drag the header of the track here. Like, here we go. I'm just going to move it up. Double click on the track header to rename it. Let's call this one grid like that. So I know this is my grid track. And also in this group, I don't want it to be actually so visible like this. I want it to be kind of faded out. So what you can do is you go to the clip properties on the top right here, and I'm going to turn the opacity down about halfway maybe like this so i can still see it but it's not bothering me with my videos the reason i put it at the top is because when i put the videos at the bottom so i have four tracks you notice i've got four tracks left that are empty so now my grid is on the top and to prevent my grid from being edited and from being moved by accident i can lock this track so this is one way to do it just lock the track so now i cannot actually do anything with this grid anymore it still is visible but i can't touch it and the nice thing is this grid actually works for helping us arrange the videos and the snapping still works. So even though the grid is locked, I can still snap to it. So here is the nice part. Here's where we get really helpful. Go back to the media bin and we have the videos. You know, I'm not going to sweat which video goes where. I'm just going to put them all in here in order, right? I'm going to just grab the first video and place it on the track one. And you see that the video actually fills the whole screen because it's a 16 by 9 video. I can move my canvas space down to have more room. The, the way to do it is, of course, if you have a recording that comes from multiple sources, I'm imagining you're maybe trying to arrange like a, a song or something. Assuming that the length of the song is the same for all of the singers or the players, then all of the tracks will have to be aligned at the same time so they start and end and synchronized right so i'm not going to worry about that right now my videos are actually different lengths and different frame rates and everything so i'm not worried about that but you want to be worried about that you want to be before you start arranging stuff you want to make sure that your videos are synchronized so what you can do is you can drag 
the first group. So I, I, I advise you to do them in groups of uh, two or three or four and just arrange them in rows. So I'm just going to grab four videos here. They're all on the timeline right now. Of course, they're all on top of each other, right? But notice because my grid is at the top, I can still see the grid and I know exactly where everything goes, right? This is another tip. You just put your videos, you synchronize them, and you arrange them in groups, right? So we have four tracks with the first four clips on the top row. Let's suppose they're going to go on the top row. So what I have to do now is just take each clip and put it in place. Now, of course, there are different sizes, different aspect ratios. So what you want to do is you want to resize them, of course. So I'm just going to you know grab this one and this is going to be the fourth one this is at the top number four you can double click the track actually and give it names and also you can resize them so i'm just going to select this clip and resize it to fit my singer in the appropriate spot on the grid you can zoom in and out if you need precision but of course this clip you notice it is a portrait clip you, you could go fancy and have one clip kind of take two slots that's up to you it's creative uh, you know freedom but I don't want to do this I want to just put them all inside of each uh, each one's kind of grid spot so this resizing is uh, one tip here for you when you have multiple singers kind of aligned in a, in a grid like that, what you want to try and do is before really in the recording phase, you want to make sure that you tell them, you know, kind of stay at the same distance from the camera so that your head is the same as everyone's size of the head. Like you don't want someone just barely visible and someone with a huge head that fills the whole grid because then you're going to have to, you know, uh, it's not going to look nice. So one thing to do is if you have videos like this that are different sizes, uh, you know, people have used, you know, their phone or something and they're kind of far away from the camera. That is OK, because you can still resize this clip. Notice here I'm resizing this. And the idea is that they're, they're going to be singing in the same position all the time. So it's quite safe for you to just place the video somewhere and not have to move it. We can cover that too. If you need to move it, we will talk about that later. But I'm placing my video in here. And what am I going to do with the rest of the video? Because it's overlapping other stuff. Well, in Camtasia, you can go to crop mode. You notice here on the top of the toolbar, you have crop. Or you can hold down the Alt key. When you hold down the Alt key, you're no longer resizing a clip. You hold down the Alt key and you're cropping it. So now I'm going to crop this video so it, the rest of it is not visible. So watch this. When I approach the grid, it just snaps into place. Isn't that cool? So you're snapping into place on the grid. So although the grid is locked, you're still snapping to it. In Camtasia, you can hold down the space key and kind of pan around on your canvas. So you can zoom in, use the mouse wheel, zoom in, pan around again, hold the Alt key and just drag down to resize or crop your video. If you need to, you can arrange it at the middle here somehow like that. So you, you, you're seeing it very nice. Don't worry about the edges, though, because I'm going to show you at the end a very cool trick to fix all of them at once. So this is my video of person number four. Let's zoom out again and take care of the second clip or third one because we're working from the top to the bottom. Again, resize this one like this, fit the person in the right place on the grid like that. Feel free to zoom in if you need to. Hold down the Alt key and just crop everything in place. You know, help yourself to the snapping, which is really, really cool and helpful. So that grid is really saving me a lot of time. OK, zooming out a bit again, take the third one, just resize it again. And now this is one tricky one because the head is quite large here. So this is up to you. If you want to zoom out or zoom in, um, if you don't have enough video to go uh, to to use, just use whatever you have vertically like this and, you know, place the head sort of in the middle and then use the Alt key to crop the rest of the video. So one cool tip is if the person in the video is moving. So let's suppose that she's like, you know, kind of a minute in one place and then kind of slides sideways or something. You can still tweak each one of them with animation because in Camtasia animations also animate the resizing of the clip, but also the cropping. 
So you can animate the cropping, so you can shift the video inside of that window without a problem. The same way you can do this with, with Alpha, with the visual effect that was added in 2021 using a shape mat, uh, which is uh, found in the visual effects, you got media mat. So you can make these little squares and just place them on top of your video and they will just crop that video in place and then you can move it inside. So there's more ways to do this. I like to use the cropping because I don't, that means I don't have to actually use another element on top of my video, occupy another track and all of that. So I like the cropping. Okay, let's move on to the last video in the grid. So that's the fourth one down there. Resize that one again. Okay, like that. I'm happy with the size. Zoom in again, use the Alt key and just crop everything in place like this. Here we go. So I have already arranged four uh, clips on my grid. Now, okay, if you have much more clips than me, which I have, I have 12 here. Uh, someone said they may have 40, that's five by eight grid maybe then that might be a job that you know requires more time but if i wasn't spending time explaining this i probably would have been done with this grid by now so before i continue i want to tell you about this feature that's very helpful in camtasia 2021 which is proxy video because look what happens here even with these four clips only if i try and play them they're actually just not playing at all. They're just stuttering because my computer, although I have an SSD drive, plenty of memory, Camtasia really doesn't cope with so much video streams. Some of these are 60 frames per second and it just cannot decode so many. Plus I have eight more to put on there. What I advise is if you're using Camtasia 2021, before you even start working with this, go to your media bin and select all of the videos and create proxies with them. Proxy video is a new feature that was introduced just in Camtasia 2021. It's been around in a lot of software for years, but Camtasia has just introduced it. It's not perfect. It doesn't allow you to specify the resolution of the proxies, but it really doesn't matter because you're just playing here with videos. You're just seeing a, a tiny, tiny bit of them. And you know, when you're rendering your project, finally, when you're finished and you're rendering it, you know, it does render with the full resolution video. So you're not affected by the proxies in the final output file. But during editing, this is this is crazy. Look, if I'm scrubbing my timeline, these videos are hardly moving. I can't even see what's going on. So this might make your job of synchronizing the videos very difficult because, you know, you can't see them in real time. So just select all the videos in the media bin like this and just right click on them and say proxy video create proxy video this is going to take a few seconds and then what it's going to do is camtasia just generate some low resolution videos that are optimized for editing and playback and they are very fast and it helps you edit things very fast but at the end it just exports the full resolution one so you see the ones that have already been generated proxies for you see this orange kind of dot on the thumbnail that means that that video has a proxy video and Camtasia just replace those in your timeline so watch what happens when this is done generating the proxies here we go so the proxies have been generated and now look I'm scrubbing my timeline you see how smooth these four videos are, are moving here I can scrub back and forward I can exactly see what's going on. If I play them, they're they're all playing, you know, at their normal speed. So this is great. So with that in mind, I've made the proxy now for all of them. I can continue to do it. I'm not going to have you watch this, so I'm going to speed this up, but I'm just going to arrange all of them in my grid here so that I have the final project ready to see at the end.
Okay, so I've arranged all the videos on my grid. They're all looking nice. And you may have seen that I've actually grouped them together four by four on each row. So it's very nice to stay organized because then you can easily find each clip where it is and what's happening. And also you can actually rename the group. So you, when you group something, you just right click on the group and say rename group, let's call it top row, although it's at the bottom, you can move it up the top if you want like this. Then you've got right click again and middle row. And then finally the bottom row, I think that's the second one there. Rename group, bottom row. So this helps you if you if your videos are in a group, then it helps you kind of easily move them around, swap them, put them on top of the other ones and so on. And because I still have the proxies on my videos, watch how smooth the playback is with four, uh, 12 clips. At the same time, they're playing very nicely. Now, of course, it really depends on your system, I suppose, and the speed of your discs. But just so you know, these clips are actually on a secondary drive, which is not an SSD, but it's a spinning disk via USB. So you can still see that the proxies are actually created in the temporary folder on your main drive. So if that's an SSD drive, that's going to be quite fast. So look, I'm scrubbing and all the videos are playing, you know, in real time or as fast as I'm scrubbing, they're fine. So, you know, they're playing now, just make sure they're looking good. Finally, I'm ready to render this. You know, you may do other stuff like, you know, put some titles in there, put them in and out and whatever. Or you may want to animate them and, and make the, you know, people kind of turn up when they actually start singing or playing. So that is up to you. Again, creative freedom. So what I'm doing now is I have them all arranged. They're all in a grid. They do have different lengths. So just, you know, don't worry about that anymore. Some people say, okay, well, I've put them all in a grid, but I would like the borders or the edges to be nice and tidy. Well, we will make use of our grid again. I'm just going to go to the grid layer and or track and unlock the grid. So you see my grid now is here. I'm just clicking on this. And one feature that was added in Camtasia 2021 is when you group some elements together, if they have some customizable properties like text, fields, line, widths and colors and fonts and all those things, then they become available in this group here on the right in the properties panel. So you can switch to this quick properties panel by selecting the group. You're going to see them all in here. So this is all the five lines in my grid are all here. Before I change those, I go back to the clip one, which is a clip properties of my group and just turn the opacity up again. So there you go. I have a nice grid borders that's covering my videos and it, you know, puts them all nice in place. You can, of course, customize this. So if you go back to the quick properties, let's suppose maybe I want the lines to be thicker. All I have to do is just change these values in here. Let's say, I don't know, 10 pixels all the way, right? Uh, and there you go. The lines are thinner now and the videos are still in place. And also what I can do is if I don't want to have white borders, I want to have black borders, maybe just go and change the color for each one of them. Just drag it here and let me save it to my colors, select it, click, select, click, select. This is another feature, by the way, in Camtasia 2021, where you can customize a color and save it to my colors. And that color is going to be available in all of your projects, not just the current project. So there you go. I've got a, a palette here of my favorite colors I can use. So there you have it. I've just turned my grid black like this. It still plays. It's still working fine. So now I'm ready to export my video. Well, before you do, just don't forget to save often. When you do this, you know, save often. Also, before you save, make sure you have enough hard drive space on your main drive, because I've noticed that when Camtasia doesn't have enough disk space, it usually continues rendering, but it generates a corrupted video file or it cannot actually finish the file or it, it's missing frames or it cuts off at some point. So just make sure you have enough disk space for Camtasia to work with. So now let's see how long it takes for this to actually render. What I'm going to do is that though, I'm going to zoom out on my timeline and I'm going to just render the part of my video that I actually have video for everything. Notice one of the clips ends right here. So you know what? I'm going to cut everything and just render that part until this point here. So just like four seconds. 
I'm sorry about this. I could make that video longer, but just to prove, I'm just going to shift and drag and just remove all the empty tracks like so and just delete everything else. So now my project really just has, has a few seconds with clips playing for four seconds and I'm going to render this. I want to see how long it takes for me to render this with 12 video clips in a grid. So I'm going to just go to the export and choose local file and custom production. I'm going to use a simple video settings at the 75% quality is pretty much the quality where you're not getting any more benefits from uh, quality versus file size. So 75 is what I usually use 30 frames or 60 frames, depending on your source clips, click next and then choose a file name and save that project. I'm just going to save it to my uh, working folder and I'm just going to let it export it. Let's see. So here we go. It's taken about two minutes to render that video. Let's see the result playing. So the video is here. Video grid 17 megabytes. So here we go. Let's play it. Perfect. Everything is smooth. So for about four seconds, it took about two minutes. So your uh, results may vary significantly. So make sure you have enough disk space and patience. So this was my tutorial. Um, I hope it was useful and gives you an idea of how to do this. Of course, you probably need a very powerful machine to do this and plenty of disk space and patience, I suppose. But this is one way to do it. That grid is certainly very helpful to help you snap, align, arrange, plan everything ahead and then use it as a border at the end. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions about this one or Camtasia in general, let me know. I'm looking for ideas for videos. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, feel free to subscribe and see you next time.